Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Join us as we explore Kulai, a short 30 to 40 minutes drive from Johor Bahru. Every journey should start with great food, so let's go search out this hidden restaurant which reputedly serves the best roast chicken in town. Hi guys, we just parked our car here. They serve the best food, I guess. Let's go and check it out. Won Yao Ji. Let's go, guys. So, guys, we are finally here on my left. Check it out. It's a house, actually. They're famous for their roasted chicken. Apparently, they roast it in a clean, you know, clean where they roast with the baked the, uh, brick. So, that's what they say. We need to check it out, right, guys? Let's go. This restaurant specialized in this roasted chicken. It's roasted on a cane. According to the staff here, the process of making this roast chicken is quite painstaking. It takes several hours to marinate and then I'm not sure how many hours more to roast it. And this chicken is a kampung chicken, meaning that it's very low in fat and cholesterol and no um, antibiotics or hormones are added to this chicken. So it's a very healthy organic chicken. They provide gloves and scissors for you to eat the chicken. The chicken comes pretty hot so you got to be careful while handling the chicken and you can just cut off a piece here. Okay, it comes with a dipping sauce. Let me just check out the dipping sauce. Mm. It's very nice. It's like the Thai style green dipping sauce. Sour, spicy and sweet and it goes very well with the chicken and this chicken tastes really good. The marinade has been caramelized during the roasting process and it's nicely charred and it still retains the sticky sweetness of the marinades and when you bite into it, it's very juicy and very tender. And because of the long marination process, the marinade has actually permeated the meat so the meat is very very flavorful and very very soft and tender. Really yummy. This is a chicken that you must definitely check out when you're here in Kulai and we feel that it's definitely worth the trip from Johor Bahru town to Kulai which is about half an hour's drive. To eat here, you need to make advanced booking. They will send you the menu via WhatsApp and you have to pre-order the dishes in advance and especially if you want to order the soup, you need to make advanced booking because it, according to the staff, they take about five to six hours. Simmer the soup slowly over low heat, probably also in a clay oven, I'm not sure but yeah, I believe the soup here are very good. They include pig stomach soup, herbal kampung chicken soup, fish herbal soup, and a pineapple pork rib soup. Another dish that we order is a steamed lady's finger or okra with the sambal blachan. It's um, It looks very tender, so I'm sure this is going to taste very nice as well. This is the rice that we ordered. Um, there's only one type, it's a chicken rice. They call it the chicken rice here. Slightly off-white colour is from the pandan because the smell of pandan is pretty evident. Mm, smells really fragrant. Let me just taste it. Mm. Okay, the rice itself is um, plain. It's not savoury. Not like the chicken, the savoury chicken rice, but it has the aroma of um, chicken rice. It's quite evident, the flavour of pandan, ginger and a bit of garlic. It's very aromatic this rice and it's not oily at all because I don't think any chicken oil, any chicken fat is added to it. I just had to put on the pair of gloves and rip the chicken up. Right guys, uh, okay. cut out the neck, you know, it can be eaten. Uh, let's get it out. Oh, it's still very hot guys. It's still very hot and uh, sim off the, uh, the back and that's how you do it. Go right through the bone. Right guys. Turn it around. Another cut. And guys, you can rip up the pie in the two half. There you go, guys. Two half. Check out the interior. It's really nice, uh, nice and moist. Still very hot. And the uh, outside skin, just by feeling it, you can tell it's really nice. See, the chicken is so tender. You can just rip up the part, guys. Hey. Right. Not much oil for this chicken because being kampung chicken is a free range chicken, so it's a lot of exercise. A very healthy choice, right? So just rip off. And uh, for this, you just need the scissors, kind of, you know, snip it off.
Hi guys, there you have it. One chicken. You don't need a glove anymore. All I need is a fork to start the game. Alright guys, it makes it easier. Alright, so next time one really good chicken, kampung chicken that is roasted to the taste. Uh, come over to Kulai. The meat still has that smoky flavor of the charcoal, which is very amazing. But at the same time, instead of being overcooked, the chicken breast itself is still very tender. This okra or lady's finger is really very tender. Steamed to perfection, neither overcooked nor undercooked. It's just simply steamed with some um, seafood sauce, I think, and uh, with uh, some sambal served over it. And, um, light, healthy, and tasty. Nice drumsticks, eh? All I can say is, really good. Not overcooked. The juice and everything is really instant chicken. And so guys, if you're ever in Kulai, come over here and check out this place. Right, and try the chicken and there are other dishes too. Uh, you see the table opposite, uh, it's, uh, they're eating rib. You know, I think the rib is very good too, and the prawn and all this. But there's only two of us, uh, I guess uh, the chicken and the okra, it's just nice for us. Perhaps when you come in the bigger group, can okay, order more dishes. Uh, but remember to uh, call in and make a reservation first before you come. You don't want to be disappointed when you come out over here, no chicken or no soup. Hi right, guys, uh, we love our content, uh, what we presented to you, remember, subscribe and give us a like. See you guys, bye, ciao. Hi right, guys, we are back here in Kulai uh, again. So today we ordered uh, two other dishes uh, because the dishes are really big portion. So one time we ordered two. So today we are the, the uh, pig stomach soup. It's right over here. So guys, you can check it out in a very big pot. It's really good. Check out the, uh, the soup. And uh, we also ordered the uh, pork ribs, which are roasted in the clean, which is on the way. Hey right, guys, uh, check out this uh, pork rib. I think it weighs more than a pound. It's really heavy, guys. Check it out. Nicely done. Nicely caramelized, uh, both ends. So uh, it comes with this uh, dip. Uh, you're gonna set it aside and some uh, probably a salad. You're gonna cut it up and uh, you know, the way to cut the rib is you know along this uh, line here. Uh, guys, it's really hard. You know, I just tell you. Uh, yep. So I'm gonna sing my team to and taste it. So guys, we're nearly done with the ribs. Surprisingly, between the two of us, we can finish them. <laughs> yeah, although it looks like a huge slab, but it's actually not so intimidating once you start eating it because it's mostly the bones, all right? So um, our verdict about this rib is this. If you have to choose between the chicken and the rib, definitely go for the chicken. The chicken is so much nicer. I mean, the, the rib is not bad either, but it's not really the best that we've tried so far. And um, for the rib itself, the marinade is pretty nice. The one on the surface, um, the marinade itself is um, it's very tasty. It has the right amount of sweetness and savory, very nicely balanced marinade. It would be better if this rib is marinated more thoroughly, uh, so that the, all this uh, marinade could actually sink deeper into the meat to give it more flavor yeah and this rib itself because it's not a baby back rib so it's more chewy but if you are someone who likes a bit more bite to your meat then this is perfect for you all right we will definitely come back here again but for the chicken and other dishes well personally i prefer the chicken uh chicken is something special uh because the kampung chicken uh less in cholesterol less in fat and uh it, it tastes really good. The chicken has a different kind of flavor to it. So guys, this is the pig stomach soup with a si shen. Si shen is a blend of Chinese herbs that consists of lotus seed, um, fox nut, um, poria, fuling, and the Chinese yam, huai shan. And according to TCM, si shen is very good for improving digestion, improving um, the function of your spleen. At the same time, if you are the nervous type, this soup will be great for you because it helps to calm the nerves too, okay? So, um, yeah, maybe that's why the more I drink this soup, the more chill I'm feeling right now. It's um, quite light in taste and it's not oily at all. Not oily and not greasy. 
and um, it's slightly peppery, not as peppery as those we are used to, but um, overall it's very pleasant to drink. And by the way, it's a very huge pot here that I think is enough for 10 people, 8 to 10 people. So right now, just between my husband and me, two of us, I don't think we can finish the soup tonight. Next time, we'll bring a bigger group along with us, probably our whole family gang. Right, guys? See you. Next, while in Kulai, let's go and check out an iconic Hakka dish. The Chinese population of Kulai is predominantly made up of Hakka. So a visit to Kulai is not complete without tasting the famous Hakka dish, Lei Cha Fan. So today we are at this restaurant behind me, Ming Xuan Restaurant, famous for the Lei Cha Fan. So let's go and check it out guys. Hi guys, uh, so now uh, we're in this uh, Mingxuan restaurant. Uh, this uh, in front of me is the Lei Cha Fan. Hi guys, uh, what is made up of is uh, rice, and we got uh, fried anchovies, tofu, radish, nuts, cabbage, spinach, and uh, long beans cut in the small cubes. Right. This is the famous uh, tandoor tea, or they call it lei cha. Inside the lei cha is made up of uh, many, many herbs, and uh, especially you can see the green color here is a uh, green tea leaf. What happened is that they grind them together, the green tea leaf together with other herbs such as coriander, basil leaf, and ai cha. Right, guys. Uh, how this thing came about is uh, during the uh, Sun Guo Shi Dai or the Three Kingdom period in China there are many unrest a lot of people they migrate from the northern part of China to the southern part right and then uh, during that time this uh, Chang Fei was conquering Chengdu and uh, somehow the soldier fell sick so there's a physician among the soldiers the troops that came about with this Lei Cha what he did is uh, he took green tea and then he pound it together and grind it together with a lot of herbs right and the uh, Hakka word for grind is called Lei and Lei in Mandarin means thunder so thunder tea guys right so the next time you taste a thunder tea with the rice you know where it came about this happened 1700 years ago then the Hakka people they were very resilient they modified it that's why you have it in Taiwan Singapore Indonesia and Malaysia but every country will have different kind of ingredients in it but all you know is a uh, Hakka tradition guys all right so next time you really want good Lei Cha with the Lei Cha Fan come to Kulai because Kulai is made up of predominantly Chinese who are Hakka all right and then one more thing the famous Hakka Yang Tofu right you have to try it when you come to Kulai in this restaurant called Ming Shuan. so guys there are two ways to eat Lei Cha um, it depends on your preference so you can either just use this as a soup and drink it while enjoying the rice or like me what I'll do is I'll just pour the whole bowl inside okay and then I'll just mix everything together yep this is how I will eat Lei Cha Fan because I find that um, it really brings out all the flavors and textures. Let's see how this Lei Cha rice tastes. Cheers. It's not overly herbal, but you can definitely taste some um, the herbs in it. Um, it's pretty mild, I would say, not too strong. And I think it will suit most people because um, some people don't like the Lei Cha to be overly herbal. Actually, Lei Cha is one of my favorite food, although I'm not Hakka. Because I love herbs and spices and vegetables, so I think that um, it's a, actually a very healthy and very nutrient-dense dish. Because of the green tea, the blend of herbs, you know, things like that, that's good for digestion. And of course, green tea is rich in antioxidants, so no wonder during those days, when Zhang Fei soldier had this epidemic outbreak. 
uh, the physician prescribed this as a kind of cure for them because of the medicinal properties of the herbs as well as the antioxidants which help them, I believe, in their healing, in their recuperation to good health. And of course, with all the carbs and the rice, it gives them energy to fight on. Hi guys, uh, hot afternoon here. So I'm uh, here to visit the Galapa Sawit War Art. Unlike the uh, War Art in the Penang, in Malacca, they have one here in Kulai. Right, so we're going to take a short tour and uh, show you what the War Art looks like. Alright guys, let's go. Incidentally, this War Art on the wall, inside there are people staying. Right? They are not abandoned houses. You can see a uh, coil. They even have a great white shark here. Right, and then the uh, artist's name is here and it was done in the year 2018. And we got mystical dragons, butterflies. You know, I guess it's kind of depict the mood of the artist on that day, what they wish to paint. So uh, we have this kind of a wall art here that's pretty interesting. The hibiscus, the national flower of Malaysia. And got a guy flying the layang layang or the kite. Yeah, he got a lot of food, so the old master kill during my time. Yeah, we read the comics about old master kill and all the funny jokes and crazy things that he does. And we have a little girl here standing here. Hello, hi, hi. Well, a friendly uh, little girl at Kulai. And uh, yeah, we are so ding dong here, lion dance, and uh, they even did it on the Road itself, we see this koi here. So, guys, just in case you guys don't know, Kulai is made up of a lot of Hakka. Right? Hakka in, they call it myself and Hakka, but I can't speak Hakka. Anyway, interestingly, as we walk down the street, we saw this art mirror. Can anybody uh, guess what this is? Well, this shows the typical Hakka village back in the olden days in China. As you can see, all these are Typical units of houses where the Hakka clan will stay. Right in the middle, oh, there's a courtyard with this uh, little house here. Probably during a time it's called what we call today a community club. Isn't it interesting to find this mirror over here at the uh, Kulai in this uh, Kapala Savit Road? I've seen something like this in the movie Mulan. I'm not sure if you could recall. In the movie Mulan, Mulan was staying in a um, housing somewhat like this. It's a circular building complex, very much like our modern day apartment, but of course the style of building is different. But um, it's like an apartment where many families, Hakka families will stay. And uh, they are like, um, it's like a village, a community in itself. And I think it's very interesting how, um, how they design this complex, this compound. And, um, in the middle here, there's actually a lot of space for them to socialize together, to celebrate life, you know, things like that. I guess that's how the Hakas remain a very close, close-knitted community in those days and even till this day. Hi right, guys, uh, trying to speak a little bit of Hakka. Nga Hakka in Nga Nji means I'm a Hakka, but I don't know <laughs> anything about Hakka because my father did not teach me. So, but anyway. We speak a lot of dialect back home in Singapore, and especially in Malaysia too, we can understand each other. But uh, yeah, come back to this, it's a really, really uh, nice piece of work. Hi right, guys, whoever the artist is, really, really well done guys. We even have a map here to tell you all these places here, what to expect, where to go and eat and coffee. Right now guys, we are over here, right? We're stopping over here. This is the uh, country, right, or the gateway. And so, as you can see, there are many shops here selling food. And here we have a motif, a very big, giant motif of, you know, the Hakka Thunder Tea Rice. Hi right, guys, so we will carry on down the road here. But uh, as you can see, the shops are all closed because uh, it's only, as I said, open in the morning hours. All right, guys, let's carry on and check it out.
So guys, there we have it, the street art of Kalapa Sawit Kulai. The street art here is simply quite amazing, right? They have everything from Lao Fu Zi character to Doraemon, as well as some very unique street art of local flavour that depicts the Hakka culture in Kulai. So guys, if you like street art, you like warm mirrors, you don't have to go all the way to Penang. Right here at Kulai, just about 30 minutes drive from Johor Bahru, you get to see really amazing street art. And the best part is, if you come in the afternoon, like now, you have the whole place virtually to yourself. But then of course, you miss out on the traditional Hakka local delights, which usually open only in the morning till early afternoon. Hi guys, uh, we're now at uh, Gunung Pulai in Kulai, trekking up the Gunung. Uh, because the uh, past few days I've been eating a lot. So I gotta burn out the carbs, huh, guys. We're gonna trek up there. Uh, incidentally, uh, over here you can uh, park down there. That's what the park rangers say around the car park. And uh, the last entrance to the uh, nature park is at uh, 3 o'clock. So uh, they close at 4. So we actually have one hour to explore the, the trail up there, right guys? So guys, uh, this is the entrance. You can see uh, Gunung Pulai. Gunung means hill or mount. So uh, we're about to enter into the wild, guys. All right guys, so we just found out from the ranger here. Uh, the whole track is about 4.8 kilometers. So he reminded us by four o'clock. So I said, well, we walk up, we run down. All right, guys. So you can see they are doing some uh, construction work here. And uh, this seems to be like a gateway. And uh, yeah, bringing the fresh air uh, among the uh, large uh, greenery and uh, of the uh, jungle trail of uh, Gunung Pulai. I can really hear the birds already, the cicada and all these things. So it's amazing is that once you pass through the gateway, you are into nature. Hi, right, guys. Uh, yeah, if you like nature walk, guys, uh, this is a small trail, 4.8 kilometer, to and fro is about less than 10 kilometer, provided that uh, you don't get lost, right, guys? So, uh, yep, the road is quite easy, as you can see, it's uh, really paved. So, I understand from uh, the local, there are actually two trails here. One is this paved road, which we are taking today. The other one, I think, is further down the other way, on my left, where you got all the mud and all this. But that way, I think it's much better because I can hear the streams. But that's... Check out this one first, all right, guys? Let's go. Well, guys, uh, these are the uh, tropical rainforests, as in in uh, Asia. You get lots of this uh, because we are very near the equator. So, why like they call it rainforest? Because it rains a lot here during the raining season, but it gets really hot during the uh, non raining season. As you can see, I guess uh, a rain just passed by. You can see the roads here, they are pretty wet. So, it's good because uh, the trees they need a lot of water to grow. Yeah, the canopy is quite high and uh, below the can canopy you get lots of other kind of uh, vegetation which doesn't rely so much on water but they rely a lot on shade to grow so you can find things like the fern trees and you know things that I can see a little twig and it goes up the trees and uh, yeah so when you guys are here especially after the heavy rain to be careful of falling tree trunks branches and things like that might hit them ahead right guys so be mindful when you walk enjoy the trail but Always be careful, watch where you're going. Hi guys. So guys, we have been eating so much while in Kulai. And, but thank God Kulai has got this uh, Gunung Pulai Recreational Forest where you can come by, take a hike and just work off all those calories. This is a really nice place, it's quite cooling because I think of the trees and the canopies. It's flat ground, it's easy hike for anyone of um, relatively good fitness or moderate fitness. So guys, we just uh, came up a very steep incline. It's about 150 meters. So uh, taking a breather now and uh, cause uh, there'll be more incline coming. Let's journey upwards and uh, see what we can find up there. All right guys, let's go. So yes, uh, as you walk down these steps, uh, behind me is the uh, waterfall probably known as the uh, Pulai or Pulai Waterfall. We don't know, but it says, I love Gunung Pulai. So guys, uh, we managed to come to the bottom of this uh, viewing platform where probably you can just go in and take a dip if you want. All you need to do is take a 
side stack six staircase you know come all the way down here and uh, you can really uh, enjoy the water so the water is rather cold guys yeah I guess it's from the stream up there in the underground water so it's really cold the uh, steps and the stones are really slippery so we have to be careful yeah go on to the railings and uh, well not much of a railing but at least it give you a handhold right guys so uh, yep and all these stones here the granite stones are pretty slippery you can see a lot of moss here so uh, you have to be careful right guys so guys it seems there's another higher waterfall over there yeah that one maybe is the second tier that one may be the first tier so we're gonna check it out let's go guys just encountered two guys on the way they said they're going there for a dip made it through those rocks and uh, now heading across there's a there's a little bridge here in fact and we're just crossing over to the other side of the stream guys uh yeah we managed to walk out a couple more steps uh slippery steps and stones and uh, behind me is the uh, waterfall what you can see is more than 10 story high and uh, a lot of people having a swim there or having a dip Of this broken reel to come out, I guess. The, the people here knows it too, though. It's no surprise. Eh? It's the only way out, guys. Unfortunately, due to time constraint, eh, we did not finish the whole trail of 4.8 kilometer up and 4.8 kilometer down. But we did cover a good two kilometers because we all sweat out now. So, uh, but time to go and uh, change uh, to something more comfortable and uh, probably get a coffee down the road, right, guys? So, next time you guys come here, remember bring a change of clothes. Wait ahead. Uh, quite a lot of mosquito there. You got to spray the mosquito repellent uh, or the insect repellent and uh, spend some time at the uh, waterfall. I think it's worth it. So, guys. Uh, but the Rainforest Cafe here, it's a very uh, cozy and cool place to have cafe. But unfortunately today, uh, it's closed because it's closed at 3.30. So uh, we thought that after the uh, Gunung Pulai walk, we can have a ice cold coffee here, but it's closed. So uh, yeah, we've been here before once uh, a couple of months ago. It's really nice. Uh, these are the places where you can sit and have a coffee. And that's where they uh, take your order. They serve very really good coffee, tea and uh, cakes as well so uh, yep yeah, it's a very nice place uh, among nature they use a uh, steel uh, rods uh, to build up a structure in the roof up there you know they are really a uh, kind of makeshift kind of thing and that makes this place very rustic and nice I and mean, the floor this raised floor is on the timber decking and uh, some uh, four by twos underneath supporting the whole platform so you guys can check it out the next time you come to Kulai. I bet you guys will like it. Behind me, it's a yellow building. Can you guys guess where I will bring you guys next to? Well, only way to find out, follow us. Let's go. Guys, right, this is a little like a cafe downstairs. Look at a abandoned house. Uh, we walk up the stairs and uh, lo and behold, that's a nice place. It reminds me of something like those cafe in uh, Malacca. A lot of stuff. Uh, very, uh, in itself, it's a character. All these chairs, can't find them anywhere else. And uh, they even have fish tank. Check it out. That's a uh, Siamese uh, fighting fish, guys. So, uh, so uh, order for myself, uh, ice americano. My wife, uh, quality. Right, so uh, ready to be served. Uh. So, yeah, check out this. Uh, next time you're in Kulai, come over here and Check out the place, I, I think you'll like it. So guys, uh, after all the walking at Gunung Pulai, this is actually a very nice respite. Um, it's cool, it's this place is not air conditioned, but um, it's very well ventilated, so you actually don't feel hot at all. Very nice, cool and natural ventilation, which is actually much more pleasant, I would say. 
than compared to aircon. Yeah. And um, we really like this place. It's um, from the external facade. You can't you don't expect to find something like this here because outside it's really plain. There's no big signboard to announce the presence of this um, cafe, but once you walk up the flight of stairs, it's like you enter another world, kind of like go back in time, you know, to the 1960s kind of cafe, very retro and um, yeah, quite relaxing, I'll say. Um, and I'm having this floral tea and actually it's really nice. It's just very slightly sweet, I think it's natural sweetness. Really floral, more more fruity, I would say, but um, very nice thirst quenching um, after a long or not so long walk at Gunung Kulai. So guys, be sure to check out this cafe Chi Fei when you're in Kulai, and actually they do sell um, some pastries like waffles, which I heard is pretty good as well. But because we're trying to cut down carbs, so we're not having any snacks, any cakes, just the drinks. Cheers. You can remember Kodak from and. Uh... Fuji and all this uh, film that uh, when you take, you have to really go to a place to have it develop, right? And not knowing whether the photograph will turn out well. And uh, remember this called a shakti? You know, you put it on the lake and then you kicked it. See how many times can you bounce it without it dropping on the floor? Yeah, it's a cassette recorder, player. But last time uh, when I was a kid, it's very popular. They call it a the Walkman kind of thing. Don't have it anymore now, guys. You guys, uh, my generation, definitely know what this is. They call it in Malay, tikam tikam. All right? Meaning that you take a chance, you give uh, probably the, the, my time, only two cents. You gotta tick it out and hopefully you win something big. You know, they call it the tikam tikam in Malay. Yeah, nice place, guys. Uh, you guys like uh, to look at all these old things, uh, old stuff, especially the newer generation where you missed out on this. Come to this place. For me, it's like a museum, you know? I mean, cafe, coffee and tea, sitting in a museum that is way back, probably 40 years. Hi guys. Today we're at this uh, Puto village. Uh, it's a place, uh, it's very scenic and uh, serene and tranquil. It's, uh, it's a place whereby the uh, showcase is uh, Buddhism culture arts and uh, you know there's also a place where you can come and eat uh, as you can see from here with a tea heart lotus pathway and Kuan Yin Ho white jade buddha altar and a uh, buddha pavilion and uh, bamboo forest hi uh, guys this place is uh, 43 acres it's very nice uh, today it's uh, not so hot so uh, there we are Kulai by the way and uh, yeah we're gonna take a walk and check out the place all right guys let's go and check it out So guys, right at the entrance, uh, there are a couple of Chinese greetings right here. This is uh, Ping An Si Le, means peace and joy. Zi Yu, freedom. Guys, and uh, Bao Fu, explosion of wealth. Zhu Si Jie Sun, everything smooth. All right guys, these are the common greetings that the Chinese like. And they are red, by the way, and the Chinese like red, means to be auspicious. Hi guys, uh, we're queuing up now to get our tickets into the bamboo roof conservation area. Hi guys, uh, it's RM, $10 each. We're gonna go in and check out the bamboo roof conservation area. Well, the saying here is that where there is no ceiling, I guess, well, all the way to heaven, probably how the bamboo shoot up, uh, there's no ceiling, it keeps growing. Hi guys, so let's go and check it out. This is the new bamboo shoot and bamboo can really go very fast. They sprout during the night time. They can grow as much as one feet in a couple of days. So you can see here that the new bamboo shoot. So as the bamboo goes up, it actually uh, rip off the outer hearts and that's how it grows bigger and bigger, right? These are the green bamboo guys and bamboo can really go 
high and can go wow hi guys so that's why they say but there's no ceiling hi right, guys let's take a look at this big panda bear well I guess uh, panda bear as you all know the uh, indigenous uh, Sichuan animal they feed on bamboo that's the only thing that they feed on right that's why they have this big panda bear here actually coming here is uh, unplanned so it's very nice very tranquil you can hear the rustling of the bamboo leaves and twittering of birds even though today is a hot day it feels actually quite cooling and breezy in the bamboo grooves yep. and there's really a sense of tranquility in this place so yep, we'll highly recommend that you drop by this Puto village for a visit when you're in the Kulai area <laughs> yep, trying out the trampoline kind of fun it's good exercise by the way it's really quite something else to be jumping in the middle of the bamboo groove no wonder they say there's no ceiling you know it's up and down and it's a little trampoline there yeah. three of them four of them along the way so uh, guys when you walk be careful don't step on the trampoline we're on this gigantic swing not hanging around but just swinging around guys So guys, about 400 meters away from the main entrance of Puto village, there's a very nice and tranquil cafe here called the Fat Bamboo Cafe, where you can just chill, relax and have a drink after touring the Puto village. So guys, follow me. Guys, at the hard walk, you know, at the uh, village. So we came by here, Fat Bamboo Cafe, and myself two drinks. You guys, gonna find a seat. So next time you come by here, check out this place. It's really nice, uh, cool ambient after a hot day. They sell the tea leaf as well and tea cookies. So if you guys interested, so uh, here we go. Get ourselves a seat, rest our legs, stretch out a little bit before we hit the road. So guys, uh, bamboo. So these are all made of bamboo. Remember when I was a kid, all this uh, furniture, they were made of bamboo. I used to play on them. I like make it a walking horse and turn it upside down. You don't get to see a lot of these nowadays. Uh, well, only at this place. Uh, the one is called a Fat Bamboo Cafe. Bye right, guys, uh, see you like the content. Remember, subscribe and give us a like. So guys, we got ourselves this bamboo tea, which is um local specialty yeah they only have this in kulai and um, we heard that this tea is really good for soothing the mind and it's very good for your skin you know for your bones as well because of the rich content of silica um, in the bamboo leaves well the pandas love it so let's find out why the pandas love it so much it's very relaxing here maybe bamboo does have some calming effect on the mind ever since we're here for the past hour or so we've been feeling pretty relaxed in spite of the hot sun and yeah right now just enjoying the vibe of this cafe you see with all the greenery very soothing it's a nice escape from the hustle and bustle of the city time constraint we did not uh, complete the whole Puto village uh, next time you guys have time to come over to Kulai allow yourself one to two hours to enjoy the serenity of this uh, Puto village All right signing off with a couple of good words from Chinese uh, Ping An safety see you joy safety and joy to all of you guys and uh, see you guys bye bye